I was in the first year of my college at LSR in Delhi when I first thought that there must be more to life than studying, right? I had been a nerd, I am a nerd, I've been a nerd all of my life and all of my time has always been spent studying. And I wondered what else could I do? I remember my brother, he was 19 and he was studying engineering at BIT and he was thinking the same thing. And then one night we were having this conversation on the phone about how we felt about what we were learning and one of the things that came up was are there other people like us? Do other young people worry about what they're doing? Do they feel as lost as us? And NGO Fuel was born. What we did was we used our skills and we crowdsourced crowdsource skills of people like us from across the country. Even we even had a volunteer from US, one from Korea, who were they were all trying to build something that would help NGOs and nonprofits with their skills while sitting wherever they were in the world. So that was NGO Fuel. And to me, the biggest learning opportunity was this is how I learned what work meant. I learned how to write a professional email. I learned how to talk to a client. I learned what it meant to manage people. I learned everything from ground zero. And I also learned how to be completely in that moment of building a startup. However, there was something that was missing. I just, at some level, I just didn't deeply care about NGF. I don't think that's something I've ever accepted in front of anyone. So, but that was some, like, to me, it just, it was something that was really amazing. I just did not feel as connected, as deeply connected to it as I wanted to. The hunger for me was missing. During my summer vacations in college, one of the things that happened was I got a call from a senior. She said that there was this organization, they were looking for volunteers, they were doing education. The organization was called Teach for India. It was a year old at that time and they had a bit of a gap where they wanted us to come in and be in the classrooms while the other fellows were being trained. After a single day of training, I went into a classroom three hours away from home, 26 kids, small slum called Silampur in West Delhi. I had so many ideas running through my head. My mother is a teacher and to me, I felt that this was something interesting to do. By lunch, I was exhausted. I was completely out of ideas. I had no clue how I was going to manage the rest of the time, how, what I was doing there. I just felt exhausted. I somehow held it together till the end of the day, went back home, started to do endless research, talked to my mom about classroom management strategies, asked her about what else does she do, how does she communicate to her kids, how does she get them to be inspired. I prepared. I went back to the class, I did some of what I had planned and it actually was a bit better. The next day was even better and suddenly I realized that there was a lot of fun to be had with these rowdy group of little humans who couldn't even stay still for a single picture. That's why I have like one picture with them, all of it is in chaos. But And I started to care for each and every one of them. And this was five days into this volunteering, right? In the last week of volunteering, I walked into the class and I was a bit early, I remember. It was maybe half an hour or even an hour before class. And I had come in early so that I could prepare a bit. And I saw Shivam sitting in the corner. He had been out of school for the last two, three days. And I'd been wondering what was going on. So I went up to him and I said, Shivam, I'm so happy to see you here. We missed you in class. He looked up to me and I saw that there were tears in his eyes. They were unshed. And what I'd said had just pushed them over the edge. I didn't realize what was happening. I asked him, Shivam, what, what's happening? Are you okay? And he whispered to me, which translates to my little sister is dead. I thought the, everything shifted. The, I, I didn't know what to feel. The younger sister of an eight year old, how is that possible? What does that mean? I felt so incapable. I've never felt that incapable in my entire life. I felt lost. I didn't know what to do. I hugged him, I let him cry all over me, I patted him, I didn't say a word, I still don't know what I would say to him. And 
then by that time we had other kids coming over and there was a lot of laughter in the classroom they were chatting with each other teasing each other and i remember i went out i grabbed hold of the railing and just took deep breaths till i could breathe normally again i walked over to the other fellow i asked him what would he do in this situation he had no clue either and he sent me back as i was going back i saw one of my really naughty kids anam she was there and she was just entering the class and i walked up to anam and i just had this idea come into my head and i was like anam will you help me achieve this mission and she's like what and i said see today our mission is to make shivam smile something has happened in the house and i don't i can't tell you too much about it but just you know your job is to be as talkative as naughty as you want to be with him talk to him engage him make him smile that's our mission today she and i waited all day for shivam to smile he did i don't really know if that's the best way to handle grief i pretty much doubt it but to me this was a moment that changed my life i went back home that day and i realized this is what i was meant to do on earth i wanted to ensure that each and every child across the world grew up happy and could succeed in their lives and in amani words i had stumbled upon my deepest burning for the past 7 years i have been working in the education space anything and everything you can imagine i've been a teacher i taught maths i facilitated programs as sole programs i have created curriculum i have assessed the impact of it just searching for the meaning that i wanted to create in this world in this space it is over this last year that it has become a lot clearer to me i was working in melbourne getting paid well free accommodation free utilities if you haven't been to melbourne it's heaven please go try the coffee um and somehow it wasn't enough i was again feeling that old hunger of doing something more of wanting something more i knew i could be doing more back at home in india and i felt that i would be more useful here but i didn't know exactly what i'm an amani fellow as i just shared and i went to the alumni retreat last year held in kenya and i i remember this moment so vividly i was delighted to see everyone around me all my mentors teachers people i hadn't seen in four years but this beautiful community of support that has existed around me and i went um, i was I, i remember this moment i was sitting in a room we were uh, we were at a beautiful eco lodge just off of kilifi beach and if you haven't been to kenya just imagine the most cliched travel brochure picture of blue seas and open skies it was exactly like that in kenya all of that is true and i had i remember the room that we were in was also beautiful filled with color there were hammocks everywhere i was sitting cross legged i was really comfortable but at the same time my mind was just full of questions and at this moment i looked up and jerry one of our fellows as well from the batch one the first batch ever at uh, of amani was speaking to us he was talking about how he had failed and burned through 1 million dollars and i remember two things struck me number one was how is it that he has he, how can he be so stupid and make every single mistake that amani wants us not to make every single one of them and then the second thing was my god he's so brave he's doing the one thing that i'm too scared to do he started his organization and he failed he had the courage to do that and that was the moment that i realized i had to go back i had to come back to india i had to create the impact that i was meant to create in this world that i feel i'm meant to create in this world and i went back home to melbourne i quit i told my manager i was leaving it still took some time around 6 months to wrap everything up and in the last 3 months i've working in earnest i've been working on earnest on my startup i'm building the school of future the idea is how do we get young people to be future proofed so that when new technologies come in new things are happening we get excited about them and not worry we get we get to uh, we get our young people to think about how can they bring their creativity the community that they are part of along with the digital world that they're born into 
to all help them succeed and not hamper and not be worried about any of it. It is really, really hard. Every day I wake up either confused and lost or happy and focused. And it's a constant battle of trying to figure out which one is which, which day. Um, I am really happy to be walking my talk finally. And thank you so much for listening to me.